Hello, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a very windswept Newton by the Sea. Got a howl of north northeastly, it's blown about 25 30 seas raging. I came up here last night and it was maybe a foot and a half. It's probably poor, further out, easily five foot now, so it's a proper. We did want to try and fish the haven on the other side, but it's just far too, it's far too rough. So We've marched over across the, the Haven Beach, up the Emble Stones, and we're just, we've just tucked in, in behind, basically between the bottom end of the Emble Stones and where Jenny Bells is over there. Got Gary's about 100 yards up that way, he's trying further along, and Ray's just next to us here, so it looks quite nice in this bay. Whether or not there's anything there remains to be seen. Sea's only literally just come away, so there are a few seals kicking about, but we'll just have to we we'll just have to wear it and make do with what we can. So we've got a mixture of baits. I've got some crab, cart rays, got some squid, mussel, lug. So hopefully, hopefully between the three of us, we can, uh, we can pull something out. Probably can't hear it here, but seven ounce gripper, pulley rig, cart, crab, wind howling. So I'm not sure if you can see from the, from the camera, but usually up here, further up the coast, it takes a little bit longer for the sea to properly colour up, whereas down tank side where you've got like the blight, the tine and the weir coming out, sea colours up really quickly. But even up here, there's a fair bit of colour and it's, it's blowing hard all night, so it's probably quite a good sign. And it's re as you can see, it's really, really overcast. We're getting a little bit of rain, but it's just drizzle, it's nothing too heavy, so... Hopefully, we might be able to get something. As I say, we did want to get over into the haven, but it's just a bit a bit too heavy today, but we'll make do with what we've got here and hopefully get something. Hopefully not another blank. So we'll gear today is the usual Zipex HST Evo, 13 foot 10. Shimano Aero Technium, 55 pound braid with a 100 pound leader. Ray's got his six and a half thousand spin fisher. That's loaded with 50 pound braid and a 90 pound braid leader and he's using a, a classic of a rod the Gray's Shadow which is pff, I dare say it's probably one of the best ones out there it's literally immaculate and that was built by Stan Parkin as well so hopefully because this is Ray's first time out cod fishing hopefully he can get one on his rod and christen it so fingers crossed got a little bit of mixed ground kelp and stuff in front of us so Hopefully there's a fish or two just sitting amongst the kelp. But at the minute, we're just braving the conditions and making the most of a not ideal situation. Well, I was staying at my parents last night. Sorry, I'm talking with my mouth full, that's terrible. Ray and Gary have driven up from Bolden, South Shields where they live and Ray's very kindly brought us up a superb crispy bacon sarnie. There mightn't be any fish, but that's making up for it. Well, this one's been in a good 25 minutes or so, so I did think I might have had one or two knocks earlier, but I don't think so. I've got, oh, I think my gear's ah, yeah. wrapped up in that kelp. Not a lot of uh, Not a lot of that bait left. Good job I wound in. I did wonder if I'd had a couple of knocks earlier, but maybe I had. Just gonna try and get this touch further out right into the middle of that bay and hope that maybe one or two fish would just decide to allow the swell to push them in and swim into that gully. The wind is 
not ideal, but we've positioned ourselves so a sap with it coming directly overhead so it doesn't take much of a cast to get a reasonable distance into that bin. It's not the it's not the easiest terrain to be casting from either up here. Another big, I've got a frozen crab and a lug, blue lug strapped onto the side of that, so I'm gonna fire this one out. I'm just chucking it a little bit to the left because when the sinker goes in the air, the wind will blow it to the right a bit, so. What I'm doing as well is I'm not tight, I'm not winding tight up to that, to me end gear. I'm allowing a little bit of a bow on the line because with having braid, there's no stretch. So any of these big swells will just move the bow and a, a bit of the, there'll be a little bit of cushion in the rod. If I tighten up, it'll just lift me gear and I'll end up just getting pulled into a snag. So I'm intentionally not tightening up too, too tight to it. Come on, it's got to be a fish out there. Not the easiest of conditions to film in today, but I'll try and bring you something. Hopefully with a fish. The phrase just getting a knock there. Is that someone having a go at it there? Oh, is he a line? Ah. Ah. So, what I'm doing for this, for this uh, cast, I've got half a decent sort of coral cart wrap. Going to get that on the hook, bind it on, but lightly because it is very, very soft. It's just come out the flask, but it does soften up quite quickly. Because so I just put that on fairly lightly, and then I've just got a small bit of squid that I just put over the over the softer part of the cart. Get that wrapped round, and then it just gives it a lot more life on the seabed. Just a nice big, and then once you've got your squid round, then you can put a bit more pressure on your elastic. You can see there where there's a bit of cart poking through, and it's just the elastic's just shearing straight through. So that's why I put the squid on just to give it plenty of protection. You can see there's a good there's a good bit of release there as well, so it's not completely enclosed. It just gives it a lot more life. And what it does mean is when you cast, it's not just going to explode as well. Be very, very liberal on your elastic. Get your trusty panel. One, whoops. One, two, three. And just nick that into the tough bit of the squid. Pull it up. And there we go. Rigs wise, usual pulley, nice, long. It's probably about five foot. That's 100 pound Asso Classic. Splashdown, weak link, rotter, seven ounce gripper. And the hook length is 60 pound Amnesia. Brilliant line. Usual 100 pound power swivels. So we'll get that clipped up, get it out in the next 15 or 20 minutes. So I'm not sure if you can see, but Gary's just tucking himself in behind there. This whole gully between sort of Jenny Bells and the Emblestones does tend to widen out and then there's a big island over here. There'll be a lot of current going through there, especially with this sea, but so far we haven't managed to catch anything, but we're gonna keep plugging away and hopefully pull something out because it's quite a bracing day today that northerly's very very strong the seas pretty big but so far haven't managed to hook anything in anything but it's lovely to be out though it's a beautiful part of the world tide today is a very very big tide we've got a 0.7 ebb and we've got about another 10 minutes until bottom water and you can see down here there's a lot of the heavy thick kelp jungles just starting to get exposed and that's just all the habitat for the fish and obviously where a lot of the foods the foods held up and holds up and obviously a cod and wrasse and coalies will just come into that and nose about. Right, this one's been in quite a while now. 
go bang on low water so I'm gonna get a, a fresh bait out then hopefully see if something starts to come in on the tide oh my gears right and that kelp down there that's the problem now got it yet again no bait we'll try and put this lease slightly to the left a little bit Uh huh. yeah, I think there's a good bit of depth in there. I'll try and put my rod tip a bit higher, see if I can keep it out of that kelp. We're probably about bang on low water now. Tide should be turning any minute, so hopefully it might push a fish or two in with it. Race sinker came off right in the shoreline there, so he's hopefully going to get it back, but This is looking like it might be yet another video without any fish, so all I can do is apologise. I just can't seem to catch fish at the minute, but me luck's going to change at some point. Hopefully Gary can catch. Gary's usually reliable to catch something to drag me up and out of uh, the embarrassment, but I'm going to, I'm going to apologise in advance if, uh, if I haven't brought you any fish, but... As I've said in other videos, I'm just going to get out, record, and just show you what we've been up to, regardless. So, for anybody not from the northeast or not familiar with this type of fishing, this is the stuff that we're casting into just thick, heavy kelp. That's actually, that's actually quite a particularly good example of a specimen there. Look at the Look at the patterns on that. But you can see why. God, I've never quite seen anything like that. But you can see why this holds good holding ground for fish, bait, bait fish. It's just really good cover for the cod and the wrasse and obviously for the bait fish as well. So got that sort of stuff and then this thick, heavier red kelp and that's Obviously why the fish live there, why the food lives there, but it's also why you've got to be using really sturdy gear that's up for the job. Heavy line, good sturdy rods, strong end tackle as well to get your gear back and get the fish through it, so... Still no fish. Actually just had... Just had a bite. Something definitely had a pull at it. Not there now, could have just been a, you know, like a lobster grabbing it and trying to pull it into its lair. Yeah, yeah, definitely someone had a, yeah. Give it a few minutes for some action. Right, well after that inquiry, nothing has come of it, so I'm going to change my bait. I think what I'm going to do this next cast oh, is just chuck it short. There's a big kelp bird just starting to get covered by the tide in front of us. I'm just going to plop one a little bit shorter into there and just hope that there's a fish sitting there. We're about rough, roughly an hour into the flood now, so hopefully some something might happen and fortunes may change but just saying to Ray there the hooks are coming back strip I don't know if there's a lot of crabs or lobsters out there but I think there might be because I think when I had that tap before I'm gonna maybe have the look of a lobster just grabbing it and having a pluck away so might be what the issue is but as I say, I'm going to get this other one out there, quite short. I don't know if you can see on the camera, there's just a little bit of kind of white water where it's just flowing off the end of that reef there. I'm just going to chuck it just in behind the kelp. 
and see if there's anything just sitting there closer in. Got a big bit of cart and squid on this one. Let's see what my judgment's like here. I'm just gonna slow up. Yep, that's exactly where I wanted it. Right. It's often the case fishing like this, it's very easy to get caught into the trap of just blasting the bait as far as you can every single time, but it's not always necessary, especially off the beaches at night. It's just all about plopping it into the holes, really. Right, come on. Hopefully a change of tide, change of fortune. Whoa. God, literally like absolutely nothing left. Right, last cast saloon. Put this one a little bit further in the hope that something is out there. Wishful thinking, I appreciate, but it's fishing for you. Just starting to get a little bit rougher as well in here as this tide's flooding in. Starting to push in quick now. As I said earlier, I've got a 0.74 ebb, so it's going to push in very quickly. Well, fortunately, that's the end of the session, no fish. Conditions didn't look half bad, but couldn't really fish where I wanted to fish. Sea has just come away to be fair, so hopefully you've enjoyed the video and seen a bit Newton by the sea anyway. So as always, thanks for watching. Tight lines, keep fishing. We'll see you on the next one.